Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of a whole bunch of books on car modification, modifying the aerodynamics of your road car, setting up a home car workshop, optimizing car performance modifications. Now, the topic of today's video does not relate to any of those books, but it's a really, really cool way of modeling space frames or other similar structures. But I should say before I start, if you're already using computer-aided design, if you're already using structural programs to model your design, I don't think this will be relevant to you. This is for people who are not using similar computer diagrams, computer-aided designs, computer structural analysis. It's for people who want something that's really simple, really cheap, basically no cost, and I think really effective. Now, the sort of approach that I'm going to take today has been done for decades. When I was in the Mercedes-Benz German Museum, they had this wonderful model of one of their uh, 1950s cars, and they tested the structure of these space frame models in a very similar way to the way I'm going to talk about now. Here it is full size, but they always developed small models first. Now, lots of people in the past have stuck matchsticks together with glue to test test their models. And when I looked at that, I thought, my gosh, how long does it take for the glue to dry? How finicky would that be? Surely there must be a simpler and easier way to do it. Now, as I say, though, look, if, if you're using these sorts of models already, great. Just don't pay any attention to this video. Use the computer model, use the uh, structural analysis software uh, rather than do it in this way. So what was I doing? Well, I was building a recumbent bicycle and it had full front and rear suspension, and I wanted to model the strength of the front and rear suspension arms. Uh, Human-powered vehicles, recumbent bikes, all bikes, are incredibly light and strong for the loads they have to take. And if you want a, a human-powered uh, machine to weigh under 20 kilograms, you're watching every single gram in a way that most car makers don't have any idea about. We're talking about really, really finicky design. And of course, if it fails and you're the constructor and you're riding the machine, you end up on the road. Not good. So this was the vehicle I was trying to develop some models for, and especially the front suspension arm. Here are springs, there are three springs, front and rear connected springs, and on a bike, it's under full front braking where your biggest loads occur on those front forks because the bottom of the front fork is attempting to be dragged backwards and up to 1G. There's a lot of force being applied to it, so that's the arm that I was actually modeling. Now, how do I develop the models? Well, I use copper wire. This is industrial copper wire, the sort that's used in wiring factories, and each strand of the copper is relatively thick. You unwind them from the wire, you put one end in a vise, you grab the other end with a pair of pliers, and you stretch it, and suddenly it's straight, it's stiff, it's strong, and it's perfect to solder together into a space frame model. And that's the trick. You solder them together rather than gluing it, which means it's really quick. You can really undo your solder. And also it replicates much better the welding that's used in real space frame structures, whereas a technical analysis uses what's called a pin joint structure, where every joint is free to move. In the real world, that's not usually the case. So just simply a soldering iron, any sort of soldering iron will have enough power to solder together the sort of wire that I'm talking about. So here's a, a, a drawing, a printed out drawing of the front suspension arm of that proposed uh, recumbent bicycle. And all I've done is lay the copper wire on top of the drawing and then solder it at the joins. Now remember, you do stretch the copper wire out so then it's dead straight and then it's simply a case of cutting and soldering it together. Now, Remember also, I was most concerned about the force backwards on the lower part of the forks, and the suspension arm was pivoted from this point. So all I have to do is hold that point with one hand and use a pair of pliers to force the lower part of the front forks backwards and then see what fails. And the, one of the beauties of using copper wire compared with, say, matchsticks, is you can see where the failure occurs. You have witness indications of what actually happened. So here I am. I have a pair of long nose pliers. I'm holding it at the uh, pivot point of the suspension arm, and I am bending it that way to show uh, what would actually happen. And what did happen? Well, before I get to it, there's another picture of it. 
And then what did happen? It bent there. Now, after you see how it fails, you go, oh yeah, well, of course it would have failed there. But for me, at least, it wasn't obvious before it actually failed where it would fail, and this showed it. So how could I strengthen that part? Well, I put in two braces like that, and then what happened? Well, this brace actually failed by bending upwards towards the camera. Now, if you then wrap two pieces of copper together, use an electric drill to spin them together, you can just strengthen that particular brace and then see what fails. Now, that's effectively replicating twice the strength for that particular member. I didn't do that. I straightened it again and thought, what happens if I delete this one? Do I really need that piece in there? I tested again with the pliers and boy, did I ever need that piece in there. Look at how it failed. Now, we're dealing here with a two-dimensional structure. The front forks, the front suspension arm of this bike was going to be effectively just a flat structure. But what about three dimension? Before I get to that, in the end, that's how it was failing. It was actually breaking the solder joint. Now, three-dimensional. Here's a model of a rear suspension arm that I was working on for a different recumbent uh, tricycle in this case, a recumbent trike. I've built quite a few of those over the years. This is quite a complex model, lots and lots of members in it, and I was testing it and seeing how it failed, looking at where all the forces would be acting. And then I actually simplified it down to this. So this is actually, this bit here is, is like a pyramid. It's higher than the rest of it. It's just two copper wires um, spun together. There's all of these up the top are, are double thickness. And then these members, which are largely, largely in tension, are just single wire thicknesses. Now across the end, that's where the suspension pivots go. So it's held rigidly together there. And at the back here, that's where the wheel dropouts go. So again, the wheel axle holds those things in, in perfect um, distance apart. They're not, not weak spots of it. And here it is constructed. It's constructed of chrome molly tube. You can see these tubes are larger diameter. These tension braces are smaller diameter. There are the bearings for the uh, suspension pivot. Here are the dropouts for the rear wheel. And then here it is in the actual machine. Now, it's hard to see because there's lots of tubes, but there is the suspension rear arm. There's a nice air spring, another air spring there. There's the nice suspension arm. Now, remember a human powered vehicle, including bicycles, take enormous loads for their weight. If you start looking at the amount of load that was going through this rear suspension arm, especially when you put a carrier on the back and put 50 kilograms of, of water in the, in 50 liters of water in the carrier, and then drop off six inch, 150 mil drops, which is what I was doing to test, the forces acting in that rear suspension arm are phenomenal. And has it failed? Well, not yet. Now, could I have come up with that just by looking at it? No, I don't think I could have. I just don't think I have the ability. But doing modeling in the copper wire and testing to destruction gave me a really good guide as to what would likely work in a full size, uh, in this case, uh, a tricycle. And incidentally, here I am testing with that full 50 kilograms or so on the back, picking up a wheel uh, under a lot of load in this sort of testing. It was the best way I found to quickly and easily and at zero cost test different constructional approaches. My books, Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car, Setting Up a Home Car Workshop, Optimizing Car Performance Modifications, and quite a few others. Uh, I don't cover that space frame technique in any of those books, but I do cover lots of tips and tricks that I think you'll find very, very interesting. Thank you.